Hi everyone, we're here at Ho for the second T20 between England and New Zealand um, and back to the sun hat today uh, because as we all know the sun always shines at Hove. Now Sid, England won that first T20 pretty comprehensively in the end. Uh, reflections on that match, a couple of days on from that? Yeah, it was all down to Tony Beaumont really, wasn't it? Her 97, you know, set up a, a, a platform that was just far too many runs for New Zealand to chase. So, and you know, she continued her magnificent run of form and I still maintain, I'll say it again, she, over the last like six or seven years as a whole, she's consistently been England's best player. It's easy to point to any one year and go, well, she probably wasn't England's quite England's best player that year and she wasn't quite England's best that player that year, but over the whole time she has been, and probably this year as well, she has been England's best player. You know, the only disappointment for her is she shared two balls left, she was on 97 and what does she do she tries a premeditated ramp Tammy 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 we've talked about okay we haven't talked about this because um, you know um, I don't talk to her about such things she's got better people to listen to than me but honestly that's it's not a percentage shot for her um, as the New Zealand bus pulls in behind us um, spot the players if you can through the darkened glass um, it's not a percentage shot for her. She played it four times in that innings. It came off once. She made a mess of it twice and she got out on the other time. It's not a percentage shot, Tammy. It's a percentage not. Um, but overall, no, really well played. Um, you know, given Tammy's innings, did, do you think New Zealand did a whole lot wrong, really? Well, had I been a bit, a bit careful what, what I say <laughs> as they potentially get off the bus behind us? Um, yeah, I thought it was a, um, maybe a bit of a strategic error um, and I was a bit surprised to see that they'd won the toss but um, decided that they were going to put England in. Um, we know that um, obviously Susie Bates um, is coming back off having not really played. Hey Ralph. <laughs> Hello. Ready for the big game. Yes, thank you. Good. Wish us luck. Bye. We're just saying how well you played. So. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to get photo bombed in your video, get photo bombed by the England coach. <laughs> anyway, as you were saying, Raf, I don't quite know where to go from there. Are we we're keeping that in, are we? Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> You've lost your train of thought now, haven't you? We're going to have to keep that in as well, otherwise we have to ditch the whole thing. Okay, what I was saying was, I thought it was a bit of a strategic error for New Zealand to uh, win, the to win the toss and then put England in to bat. Um, we know that uh, Susie Bates is coming off having played no international cricket since last October and obviously having a few months away with her injury and having her shoulder operation. Um, and obviously Sophie Devine uh, missed the New Zealand's Australia series earlier this year um, and has had some time away from the game herself. Those two are the ones they've picked to open up the batting. For them to come in um, having played not very much cricket at all recently um, and then have that scoreboard pressure of England having made an enormous score in the first innings um, obviously did put them under more pressure and I would have thought it would have been more helpful for them to have kind of a clean slate as it were and actually um, really for them to kind of um, come out uh, and open the batting um, in the first innings um, and then you would have been kind of been starting from zero. I do think that um, obviously some teams say that they really like chasing but it also always seems to me that you risk putting yourself under enormous scoreboard pressure then because you have to make the runs. Yeah it's a decision you make when you're hyper confident isn't it and you know New Zealand might be feeling that confident. I'm not completely convinced that that that's kind of justified by the results recently so you know it was tough for them and it's been you know tough tough for their for their bowling attack as well we need to remember that actually if you look at the last sort of four years they're without two of their best bowlers Susie Bates um, and Amelia Kerr um, well Susie's playing but um, we believe can't bowl and probably won't bowl again given her shoulder complications and Amelia sitting out of this tour um, you know so it's it's tough and they put the put the everyone under pressure yeah, and the, obviously the other notable absence from the other night was Leah Tahuhu, um, who's still kind of working her way back from this um, uh, operation that she had to have on her foot um, with this with this mole, this kind of precancerous mole. Um, so they, I guess that it's it's possible that we won't see her for the next couple of T20s because they'll want her to definitely be fit for for the ODIs that are coming up. Um, and so that puts them under more pressure because she's obviously one of their kind of leading strike bowlers. Um, so all in all, um, it's a bit tricky for them with the ball. Um, I guess that we might see a few change-ups today in the second match and um, they have got this new exciting young quick that people are saying good things about we've not really seen very much of her if anything of her um, Molly Penfold who's done so well in domestic New Zealand cricket um, so it might be interesting to see whether they throw here into the mix today and then we might get to see whether she can kind of pull it back for them um, but yeah it's a, it was a tricky game and let's hope um, well 
don't know. I mean, we just heard Lisa Cartley say that she hopes that they can, that England can pull it off again today. Um, obviously, New Zealand will be hoping the opposite. Um, now, the big question. Um, actually, we should have asked Lisa Cartley this just now. <laughs> uh, the big question. Well, she probably wouldn't have told us anything. But the big question is: Is Heather Knight going to be fit to play today? Have we heard anything about that from the England camp? Um, uh, just our, uh, aside from our <laughs> recent encounter. <laughs> yeah, they've played this with a very straight back. They've said that, they've said that, that they'll announce their team at the toss, so they're not giving anything away. Um, I guess that probably sounds a little bit like she maybe won't play. Um, and so, you know, we could be looking at a slightly different team again, and again, not ideally the team they would have wanted to play. Um, what do you think? Do you think that that would mean that, you know, are we perhaps going to see a one of my Abushio or Charlie Dean come in? Of course, they should be back with the team now after being um, pinged out of the, the first match. Um, or will we see more Emma Lamb? What's your thoughts, Raf? I think um, if I was Emma Lamb, then I think I would find it a bit difficult to take, um, having um, played a reasonably minimal role in that first game, um, to then not be, be playing in this second game. I suppose you could say she was kind of in the right place at the right time, in the sense of um, Maya Boucher and Charlie Dean both getting pinged, as you say, and then um, obviously with Heather Knight having this sudden um, kind of issue with her hamstring um, at the 11th hour. Um, you know, I thought it was actually really disappointing the way that um, they didn't give Emma Lamb an over or a couple of overs even. Um, it was obvious after Amy Satterthwaite got out in the 13th or 14th over that New Zealand were never going to chase down those runs. So to give a player on debut who unfortunately um, had, hadn't had the chance to face the ball with the bat, well that happens when you're batting at 6 in T20. But to not give her a, an over or a couple of overs um, in that match when England had already effectively won seems to be a massive missed opportunity to me. That could have given her a real confidence boost um, even if she then doesn't go on and play a role in the rest of the series at least she's kind of done something rather than almost getting a cap and um, which is always exciting and congratulations to her and let's hope that she goes on and plays plenty more matches for England but just would have been nice really I, I, I found that inexplicable not to give her an over or two to potentially pick up a couple of cheap wickets um, will we see her again today unsure what do you think Sid my guess is that if anybody out of the new group plays today, it will be Charlie Dean um, because she should be back with the squad. Um, and I think that they that, that that was probably what they were planning to do anyway. So I think we might see her today, but we'll find out. We'll find out at the toss, as England have told us. Great. Well, after that unexpected encounter with the England coach early on, this might end up being our most watched video ever. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, we'll give her a good shout out underneath. Um, thanks, Lisa. Uh, good luck, England and New Zealand. Um, and let's go and watch some cricket. Bye for now.